We're going to discuss how we're going to achieve this write-on effect using 3D Studio Max and Photoshop. This can be used for writing on graffiti, writing on names, or whatever you want to use this for. So I'm going to start with a plane here in 3D Studio Max. And I'm going to set the segments to one segment, and I'm going to just make the plane an equal size. Then I'm going to position the plane in uh, the 0, 0, 0 coordinates of XYZ. Now, I added a texture, which I found online, of a floor plan and an elevation of a house. Um, you can see that this is uh, two floors. Uh, left uh, On the right side, lower right side, is the first floor. On the left side is the second floor and at the top was the house so what I'm trying to do here is just show the first floor in this particular picture but it's too pixelated and so I'm now changing uh, the um, configuration to get some pixelation back now this does not refresh until you uh, resample that material so I just sampled that material uh, and the uh, picture is now nice and crisp. Uh, I'm moving a little fast here, but this is because I need to upload this to YouTube and uh, just if, if you miss any step, just rewind it and look at it again. Okay. So now I made a copy of that um, plane and of course how I'm moving the texture around on the plane is I've added a UVW map modifier to the plane itself and I am actually not scaling the plane or moving the plane, but I'm scaling and moving the gizmo, right? So in the uh, elevation, you'll notice that the elevation is actually not drawn to the same uh, scale ratio as the floor plan. It, it is wider. This is very obvious by that little crease um, uh, on the floor plan that uh, uh, indicates where the chimney is supposed to be as well as the wall on the right. So now I'm trying to line up that chimney and the wall on the right um, to get the same scale going. Um, we're going to kind of use these planes as, uh, uh, as, as alpha channels for our blueprint. So now that I got uh, the elevation going I'm going to add another plane from the um, first now I'm scaling the plane to to uh, to more of the size of the image and then I'm going to add another plane from the floor plane to create the second floor Now, this is a nice effect if you have all four sides of a building and you move the elevations to the edges, to the outer edges of the building and draw the floor plans within the middle, uh, then uh, it will come out very well. We're actually not going to animate the texture itself within Max, but we're going to use Photoshop to animate the texture. So now you see the little house set up and as you can see it renders like cardboard boxes with a drawing on it. So this is the material slate, uh, the material editor called Slate um, which my students are not uh, seeing yet, they're using the old material editor but you see that this is a note based system where you can drag um, from one material to the other. So right now what I did is I changed the uh, the diffuse channel and instead I pulled it into the opacity channel and I made the material white and now I'm going to invert this opacity channel so that it's actually the white lines uh, that show the opacity and now in the environmental map I'm changing the background color to blue so now it's going to render a white material on a blue background but you can see there's a gray one in the middle and this due to lighting. So I'm setting up the self-illumination to 100% and I'm also making the material two-sided. And now when I render it, you can see that 
uh, those are some decent lines. Now this is not very clean and that's due to the fact that it is a pretty low res uh, image but uh, for the sake of this tutorial it does the job. So now I'm creating a targeted camera and an arch uh, as a path for the camera to travel on. I could just move the camera but uh, let's do it right. So I'm using a path constraint to constrain the camera to the path and I'm going to move the camera up a little bit by moving the path. Now um, I'm using the H uh, or the, the selection uh, tool to select the target and move that a little bit more into frame so I have more of the house in the frame. And it automatically added the keyframes for the um, for the path constraint so now throughout the duration of the animation the um, the uh, camera's animating but uh, now I check where the location is for that image and now I'm going into Photoshop and I'm going to pull up that image so here I'm navigating through to find that image and I'm pulling this into Photoshop So, uh, for what we're trying to do, it requires a very repetitive task of uh, duplicating layers. And uh, in an effort to save time and not get arthritis in your fingers, uh, it is easiest to create an action. An action just allows you to create, uh, to kind of record what you're doing and then redo that by just hitting a simple button. So here I'm creating a new action and I'm going to call this duplicate layer. And I'm going to set a hotkey for it, F2. So every time I hit F2, it's going to start this function. Now if I click record, any action that I do now, it will, uh, it will uh, record. But I stop this for one second because I noticed that the image that I'm working in is in a weird mode. I have to set it to, gr uh, to uh, RGB so that I can actually duplicate layers. So now I hit record, I went to edit, duplicate layer, or, or layer, duplicate layer, and now I've duplicated a layer and I'm stopping the record because that's all I want this function to do. So now when I um, click F2 on the keyboard, you will see that it has duplicated the layer, it will duplicate the layer uh, just by me hitting F2. So now I'm grabbing the brush tool uh, with a white and I'm just going to start drawing over the picture while erasing some, uh, uh, it's kind of erasing uh, uh, some of the lines. And as you notice, if you look at the action in the top right, it keeps blinking down, that is, this is because I'm consistently, I'm, I'm co continuously hitting F2 while I am drawing. So I'm drawing this white line over the black to kind of erase it while I'm hitting F2. So I'm creating all these new layers. Um, you just keep doing that for a while, just keep drawing, keep drawing, keep adding layers, keep adding layers, and keep hitting F2. Now, I skipped ahead to the end of this because, you know, you do this for the entire uh, shot. So now I have about 240 layers uh, of me just drawing white over everything. So now I went to Window and opened the Animation, tool, animation Tools and then the, um, you see the timeline down there. You can click on the right hand side in the corner and convert it to framed animation. And then you click on make frames from layers. Now your animation timeline is filled with all these layers, with all these frames. So now when you hit play, you'll notice that it is playing the animation that you created from just uh, erasing the time, uh, erasing everything and making new layers, but it's playing it backwards. So in the bottom right, you click on that little corner thing again, and you click on reverse frames. So now when you play animation, it actually draws everything on. Right? So um, I did the same thing, the same technique. Now, of course, you click on um, 
file, export, and then uh, you select uh, render video. This will allow us to render an image sequence. You have to specify uh, which, um, which folder you would like to render to. Um, this is not my usual file structure. I'm just doing this for the sake of the tutorial. I also did the same technique to write out my name. Uh, and now I'm going to render my name as well. Um, this is uh, inverted from the other one, but I'm just using it as an alpha channel. Right? So you can use this for for anything. If 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 you if you make a drawing and you want to show how you created this drawing, this is a one way to go about it. Right. Um, so yeah, I'm rendering this video, and once that is exported, I'm going into uh, 3D Max, and I'm going to replace the image that I was using before with the image sequence and I make sure that I have sequence selected with the 114 uh, uh, frames of um, of that drawing that I just created in Photoshop as well as 60 frames um, of, uh, of the name drawing on. So now I have uh, expanded my timeline to 300 frames and now I'm scrolling through and you can see that this this uh, uh, stuff is now drawing on. However, when I go too far, you notice that it starts all over again and we don't want that. So we go back into our material editor, uh, go to time and switch the end condition from loop to hold. This will ensure that uh, once that animation has finished playing, all the frames that it will no longer continue but it will hold and uh, stay how we want it to. So now the animation is drawing on the house and the floor, uh, the, uh, the floor plans and um, so it's, it's probably a good time to uh, add the, the nameplate, the signature So, I like the material editor, the slate material editor, because you can just uh, drag out new notes and um, and make connections, and it's very it's a very visible way to 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 see what you're doing uh, instead of kind of digging through your materials you can actually see what everything is connected to and what everything is doing so I'm starting the name at. Uh, to write on at 240, which at the end turned out to be a little late, but it's, it was good to 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 see what's happening. So now I'm dragging the name onto the um, nameplate, and um, uh, you'll see that uh, once I get to the end of the animation, um, the name starts to write on, and that's pretty much how you create your um, write-on effect uh, using 3 Studio Max and uh, Photoshop. Thanks. Leave a comment if you make a video with it. You know, then um, show us. Uh, leave a comment with your video and show us what you did. And um, good luck. Have fun.